everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can uh, relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight we are continuing the letter C, uh, the cat embroidery pattern. We are working through the whole alphabet of little animals. Uh, we're doing one a week and we're focusing on the first two weeks of the month. Uh, we'll be doing it. So we'll be working on this project uh, this whole year. <laughs> we're on week three, which is the letter C, the cat. We did the outlines for him last night, just the main outline, and now we're going to add some more uh, color. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. It is also the first of the month, which means our new embroidery of the month is out. It is our outer space pattern. I think these guys are so sweet and cute. Uh, so all of the kits uh, will be in the mail tomorrow morning and uh, for the subscription and uh, it will be available all month. So, all right, you guys, I'm excited for you to see the freebie in this one too. You'll have to let me know what you think. Uh, all right, let's get going. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna zoomy y'all in right away. We're gonna get some, get close up for some stitching again tonight. So, all right, we decided to change the colors. Uh, Tish from the original pattern here. Um, we decided on a gray background and we're gonna use these other colors here instead. Uh, I am gonna keep an eye on my instructions here for the uh, the how-to of it all though, like what stitches to use where. Um, so I think what I wanna do next, we finished the gray last night, little gray kitty, and I'm gonna do the stripes next in this orange. This is my um, your peach color. Uh, and then I think, I think uh, the, the eyes and everything will still do black and we might do this outline black still, but I think the ball yarn will do this blue and I think that the text will be blue and then the letters will be this kind of uh, the celery color. So that's, that's my plan as far as color goes. Uh, so you're a peach. You are next here, next in line. All right, so I'm going to get my 24 inches or so and we'll get started. I'm using three strands of floss uh, throughout, throughout these, these uh, patterns. Uh, that's what the original were and, and I like, I like three strands. It's a good thickness of stitch. So thanks again for joining me, everyone. I appreciate you stopping in tonight. All right, there we are. So here's our three. Let's get them together again. Just running my hand through it. Okay, and we're off. It was a beautiful day, beautiful in the 40s, low 40s, 41 uh, today. All right, I think I'm gonna start at the top of the tail, work my way down, and then get the rest over here. And I think that will be my path for tonight. Karen. All right, kitty, you are ready. So now these are just, I called them seed stitches in, um, in the pattern. So a seed stitch is just basically a short stitch. Uh, oftentimes, uh, traditionally, it's actually used as like padding for like a satin stitch. So you can actually make your satin stitch uh, like raised up a little bit more by putting some seed stitches underneath it. But we're using it as just decorative little, um, little uh, furs, little furs. 
little stripies. I don't know about a gray cat with bright orange stripes, but I like it. Hey, Grace. Hey, Cheryl. Gretchen, Debbie, Pam, Nita. I see all y'all popping in. I just think this this particular gray. This is the thunder uh, color gray, and the uh, Europe peach orange. Just that little like kind of peachy orange color. Those two are just really a pretty palette together. I think pretty combo. So I think we will get this whole, um, the, the like letter C's up done tonight, uh, and maybe even getting started on the C's. I think in general, this is going to be a quick design for us. Oh, Karen says hi from Greenfield, Massachusetts. Oh, you have orange cats. Oh, that's nice. Little kitties. My parents have Chad Kitty, and he's um, he's like a black and gray and white tabby with a little bit of brown, I guess. Stripy. Those are tabbies, right? I think so. I think he'd be considered a domestic short hair. But beats me. Uh, yes, Karen. So uh, this is uh, this is actually from a series of of designs. So <laughs> this is the one that we're going to be starting next week. I have the whole whole alphabet of designs here and. They're from a collection of embroidery patterns that I made about 10 years ago, which is like so long ago. It, it was actually probably more like 11 years. And we've never done a stitch along of them. Uh, I've been doing these lives for probably five years. <laughs> and uh, and we, never did a we never did a stitch along for the alphabet, which just seems weird because we've done a whole pile of other stitch alongs and stuff. So... This is the year we are stitching the whole alphabet. Um, I'm going to be making a quilt. Uh, we're going to be donating. Um, we're going to be auctioning off the quilt and donating the proceeds to the Minneapolis Crisis Nursery here. Uh, so this will be a, a year-long project for sure. But we're going to do the quilt as you go process, which will be kind of fun, I think. And uh, yeah, I'll have, um, I know I promised info on how I'm going to quilt it and all that, and, and I'm getting it, getting it done. Uh, we'll have that for everyone soon. I think we'll actually get to possibly start doing some quilting related activities on, on this, this week, just because I do think this is going to go pretty quick. I have to check. Oh, it is. Okay, so there is some satin stitched. Uh, his nose is satin stitched in. I, I didn't remember if the nose um, was filled in. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we do that with the orange as well. So I might um, have to jump up there and get a few little stitches of orange up there. We'll probably do that like with the away knot method just to so I don't have any like jumps going across his body. But yeah, I draw all of um all of our all of our patterns. It was originally my excuse to draw again because I hadn't been drawing as much anymore and do crafting at the same time. <laughs> That's kinda what started started penguin and fish that that combo 
wanting to be crafty, but wanting to keep drawing stuff. Oh yeah, I like this orange with the gray. It's pretty together. I like it. What color are his toes? Oh, um, in the design, the toes are the same color as the letter, which is gonna be green for us. So I don't know, maybe that's weird. Maybe I should make, I think I'm gonna make his toes orange too. Or, you know, I don't know. Or should I make him like little, Little baby green toes. Actually, the green is really pretty <laughs> with that gray. I think I am going to make him green, which is, I don't know, weird, but he can be a weird colored kitty. <laughs> green toes. I think it'll be cute. Just everything looks so good with this gray, I think. Third pass. Um, I do have plenty on here for um, the nose, I think, and maybe even for the, the toes, but I do want to do the nose. Um, let's see. I think I am going to do the way not method uh, just so I can have the thread on the back. So I'm going to tie a knot on this end. Jeez, I think I messed up that knot, but I think it'll work. Um, and I'm going to just go like a few inches away from where I want to start for the, the nose. And I'm still going to outline, outline the nose too, but it is filled in with some stitches. So usually when I do a satin stitch, I will go kind of to the outside of the line. But since I know I'm going to be stitching a black outline around this, I'm going to just stay kind of on the line or just to the inside of the line. <laughs> little orangey nose. It's kind of like a little pinky orange nose. So I'm, I start in the middle. I always kind of like starting in the, the middle. Or if there's like a, a like landmark point, um, I'll start there. So like right in the center of that triangle. Nose seemed like a good place to start. Alright, I think that's decent enough. Yeah, it's fine. I'm relying that I'm covering it with, uh, covering the outside with the, the black lines uh, when we outline it, so I think we're, we're fine. All right, cute. Let's uh, leave in the end. Oh wait, yeah, <laughs> I said toes, but we we're gonna do those green toes. Jeez, I forgot already, stupid. All right, so let's uh, just weave in these ends and we'll weave in the other little thread and we got a little bit left here. I'm gonna save it. It might be just enough for some use later. All right, let's snip away that away knot. Okay, and then th that will give us the little extra thread on the back here. There we go. Just kind of weave this into. Oh, ah, yeah, that's what it felt like. Lost a thread there. I think it came off of my needle a little earlier, but I thought I still had it. Oof, a little hard to thread this short. There we go. one. 
Okay, let's... Um, should we do the black first? I think we're gonna do the black first. So just so then we can get his face done. Then we'll get the whole kitty done. So I have some black. I think this has three strands. Yep, this is from, we were using this on the, on the other embroideries. Uh, I also want to outline the speech bubble in black, I think. Although I'm not 100% sold on that. <laughs> uh, I do like the idea of having this blue, but maybe the speech bubble's blue. Like maybe the outline is blue. And maybe, okay, so maybe the, the outline is blue and then the the text is the green. I kind of like that. I think the, the black might be just too bold for that now. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to do the... the um, Black for around the eyes and face. Oh, <laughs> Bluebell, thanks so much. These are our stork scissors. We have them in like a whole rainbow of, of colors. Um, I love them. <laughs> uh, I, I'm kind of using it to, to, it's matching my nails for, for the day. <laughs> but yeah, we got, we got those and all sorts of different color stork scissors uh, over over in the shop if you're interested. Um, let's see, how picky do I want to get on this? Probably pretty picky. So I might actually do each the eyes and the the nose all separate, <laughs> so I don't so I'm not jumping from one to the other because then I won't you know because I don't want to see that line jumping from one to the other so i think i might do this like one tiny bit at a time i could like weave in the ends here and jump over to the eye and jump back maybe i'll do that Ugh, but maybe not i might just full-on make these standalone things and i'm going to start with the mouth just because i got some stitches that i can weave in here i'm going to only weave these this in twice i think i think we'll be fine So this is just getting pretty bulky. All right. Um, let's see. I think we'll do one stitch um, for the mouth and then one stitch for each of these nose lines. Dude, is in a really weird order compared to what I normally do. It feels funny, but we're getting it. There we go. Yeah, because see, if I jump right over to the eye, I mean, it's really noticeable now because I have light kind of coming from underneath here. Um, you can't tell quite as much if, you know, you, you don't see that light. But I think I am going to do those separately just so they, um, it's just so you can't see that jump very much, which is a big pain. It's, a, it's annoying to do those shapes just separately but I think the effect will will be nice when I'm done so I'm gonna do that away not again and then we'll do both of those eyes one at a time I think we'll have enough thread all right and I like doing little tiny circles like this as hexagons uh, versus like diamonds, I think uh, hexagon gives a little bit more of that circular shape. If I would have traced this and not ironed it on, um, where I could have just done like a half eye. <laughs> I always kind of like doing that. Like when it, when it's um, going this way, it looks like he's uh, like just cranky it's like, like it's he's either kind of sleeping or he's just like actively ignoring you <laughs> it just seems like a, a a kitty way to do an eye 
so I, I like kind of doing the little smileys and then if you do like the upside down smile he looks more of like a, a happy little guy I'll, I'll do that with this one over here so you can kind of see so that's always an option changing changing the eyes a little bit changes the um, look look and feel of it a little bit there we go sweet little eye so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna weave in this end and then I'm gonna just jump in and do the other away knot and then um, for the other eye and then we'll we'll just tuck in those away knots both at the same time you don't have to do it at the right after you get done I'm just gonna tie a knot right away and get going on that other eye anxious to see him see see his whole face here all right so this one I'll go over here I know this looks kind of weird but we will tuck in those threads shortly all right so I'm gonna do the eye in the other direction so this is like if you did an upside down smile or an upside down you uh, it gives a different kind of look to him this is kind of like the happy sleepy look I think versus the snarky sleepy it's kind of hard to tell he's he's winking but I think that's a sweet little look for him too actually still he still looks a little cranky cranky face Glad we went with the gray, though. I think that turned out nice. There. There, sweet king cat. All right. I'm going to weave in this end, and then we will snip those and tuck them in like this, too. So one, two, three. It's kind of trying to do tuck in a lot in these little corners here or these little stitches here but I think that's fine all right let's trim away our away knots from the front you could trim them from the back too but I was kind of like doing it from the front all right and let's tuck those in as well but see now doing it this way yes it's an extra sort of headache doing these little away knots but now we're not like we don't have any jumps at all uh, around the face so like these eyes and the nose are just floating by themselves which is a, a nice look I think from the front and actually good like if you were to do this on like a, a tea towel or something where the back would be visible you might want to do it like this too just to have a slightly cleaner back an almost reversible back I suppose okay, one. you guys it's March the heck I'm ready for it to stay just beautiful out warmer than the 40s but like this oh shoot I lost a lost a thread there um the 40s I mean like this is the first we, we've been going for a walk every day and this is the first time we've had the entire width of the street <laughs> available to us and actual solid ground available to us versus snow and slush and like ice encroaching into the street and stuff so it between um you know the melt of today and yesterday it was like wow i'm on like dry flat land it was crazy oh bluebell says it was 73 in missouri oh my gosh oh gosh um my brother and his wife are in missouri 73 dang that is like the freaking purpose or uh, um, perfect temperature we just cleared the 30s <laughs> today and yesterday i think it got to like 41 
and it felt so warm. Like I downgraded, I was talking about this yesterday, I downgraded to just my normal pair of pants outside. I'm not putting on like my extra pair of pants and I downgraded my super fuzzy hat just to my normal wool hat that covers my entire head and uh, my wool mittens instead of my mega ski glove mittens. <laughs> so I'm still pretty bundled, but way not as much as um, I was, that's for sure. All right, I'm going to do this little um, ball of yarn. Yeah, and then I think we'll do the speech bubble with uh, this blue as well. So, all right. This is the winter morning blue. I know some of you guys are using similar colors. Okay. And let's get our three strands out of it again. Oops, oh, almost got two there. This only works if you do it one at a time, the pulling out the strands this way. Two and, oops, let's, oh my gosh, I'm clumsy. Let's get the last, the last one out of here. Come on, there we are. All right, good to go. And 70s, that sounds amazing. Oh, the the punch needles. Um, we don't sell the punch. Do you mean like um to do hold on, let me see. Uh Diana. I have We talked about the punch needle. Do you mean like this thing? This is, um, oops, sorry. This is the one that uh, I kind of used. So this is, oh, this is the ultra, ultra punch. Is this what you're talking about? Um, to do like uh, punch needle designs. Uh, it comes with, it comes where you can do the different heights, which is kind of nice. I'm not quite sure that this is what you're talking about, Diana, but if it is, um, it's the uh, ultrapunchneedle.com. And then I think I got another one. This was for, did we use this one? Oh, yeah, this was for bigger yarn. So, I don't know, SKC punch needle. This is for, like, big yarn, like fat yarn. So I can, I can show you that again if that was not long enough. Um, to me, that's what a punch needle is. <laughs> If, if that's if that's not what you're talking about, uh, let me know and we'll figure it out. I should maybe start carrying those though. It would be fun to do fun to do another punch needle project. Uh, okay, I am gonna start with the away knot again, and we will stitch this ball yarn up. I'm, it's still gonna be back stitch like the rest of rest of this. Oh, Amy says it got over 90 here. What? An 83 in Southern California. Jeez, that's just gorgeous. All right, I'm about four inches away. That's, that's good, I think. I'm going to start with the little string. So what we're doing here is we're basically just reserving reserving that floss so we can weave it in later, like what we did for the eyes. Normally I would weave into stitches that already exist, but there's none like in the vicinity of this without having to like jump. And apparently I'm picky on that today. I'm not always so picky uh, on that, but today I am. to see if I can order those from somewhere because that, that would be fun to do another punch needle project we only did it that like once or twice and I did get I do have some monked cloth I might even have enough to like I don't know if that's quite the right thing though for punch needle I, I mean it is but there's different like qualities and styles of that I'll I'd have to do more research but I did I did use it with the yarn and that seemed to seem to work. 
It'd be fun to try something. Like one of these guys. Oh, we talked about, oh, we talked about maybe like taking one of our, one of the new, um, one of our new flower designs. Uh, like this could be punch needled with that little punch needle. That could be kind of fun to try. You know, if we were talking about on, maybe the, we were talking about this on during our Saturday stitch along. I don't remember, but uh, we were talking about how uh, like um, rug tufting would be just like, it just looks like such a cool craft. I would love to get a tufting gun and uh, just build a big frame and just like make these fun rugs. Like what if this, little kitty was like a big rug like how cool would that be it'd be so freaking fun uh so i'm kind of like i would love that but you know <laughs> i should maybe see if i enjoy it <laughs> before like buying a bunch of stuff i'm thinking um so maybe i should play around with doing some small ones with the little needle punch uh again <laughs> I just really like the idea of making like these big cute rugs. Someday when I have a nice big space, I'll have to make make some rugs. It would be fun to do like like take commissions for rugs and just do like uh pet portraits of rug but like as a rug like something like that would be just so silly and fun i suspect that it's a pretty grueling hobby as far as moving your body around and stuff because you're lifting that gun I know a lot of people mount them onto a cable that goes to the ceiling to kind of um, mitigate that a little bit, but it's still kind of a lot. And then you're going up and down and all over the place quite a bit. So I think it's probably quite the ordeal, but like how fun. Yes, like the giant, Grace says, like your giant hedgehog, it would look cute. I just think it'd be just, just so silly so it does have, like it's it'd be it'd be a learning curve from the sense of designing for sure i think because i think you got to be kind of bold with it and you know you can't always i mean maybe you can i don't know it seems like you can't you're using fat yarn so it's not like your precision can be like super perfect all the time and i think a lot of that comes with when your piece is done and you kind of move little loops here and there just to get it perfect. So I'm thinking that might be a learning curve for me because <laughs> I like the things like in the right spot. Um, I don't know, I've watched a lot of videos on them and, and all that. But someone said you could get those guns on like eBay for way cheaper and stuff. It'd be fun to just play around. But like I need another thing, maybe, okay. Maybe that's the prize for finishing all our quilts or something, you know? <laughs> if I can get all of our quilts, like the six quilts or whatever that are hanging out here, if all those can get totally completed and out of my hair and I get rid of a bunch of other craft stuff and make enough space or whatever, then, then maybe I can get a tufting gun. I'm still interested. It's one of those things like, you know, okay, should I just let this, let this be for a while <laughs> and see if I'm actually interested yet? But I, I think I am still interested. I just got other things to make first. Other things to do and make. but it would be fun. <laughs> oh man, like I need another thing. All right, kind of just willy nilly going here and there. One, two, three. Oh, this is gonna, I'm gonna end up in a weird spot. So I'm gonna have to like, okay, I'm gonna get this side 
and then when I come back, I'm gonna get a few more stitches, and then I'm gonna, like, I, I kind of left my ball of yarn out, outside edge kind of hanging out there. I'm gonna have to come back and figure that out. Actually, you know what? This would have been cute satin stitched, this, this ball of yarn we could have, um, or like short and long stitched, we could have done whole, like, threads in the direction of, um, the yarn. Yeah, so here I will get a few more of these stitches on the outside edge. Oh, Catherine says, uh, I love your embroidery floss colors as well, the names. Thanks so much. That was really hard to choose the names. Like, it was absurdly hard. It was just so silly. Uh, will you have any new colors this year? Uh, probably not. Um, just because I have to get, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of them made all at once. Um, so probably not. Uh, not for a little while. Have you given any more thought to doing another fabric line? And it's on, it's been on the brain a little bit more than usual lately, Grace. Um, if there's a, if there's something, uh, um, you'd like to see, let me know as far as, as far as fabric goes. I do have actually a few collections that never got produced, so it'd be fun to at least, like, you know, put those up on Spoonflower or something, because then we could, we could just print our own, or if you wanted some, it'd just be available, uh. So I don't know, but yeah, I think, um, actually I was thinking about that with like all the new florals that we've been doing, the like spring blooms and, or the, not the spring blooms, the first blooms and those summer blooms. I was thinking, uh, those could turn into like a really cute kind of like vintagey, but, but not, um, sort of collection would be kind of cute. So I've been thinking about it a little bit more. Tell about your punch needles, please. So Diana, is, is that what you're talking about? The, what I showed earlier, the, the punch needles. I do have that. Um, here's, here's that uh, punch needle piece that we did that we did, a, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever, and this one was done with the uh, ultra ultra punch needle. I don't know if you can see that ultrapunchneedle.com um, is, I think, where I got this from, or from an Etsy shop or something with it. But this was done with that, so you can get like different different uh, heights of your loops with that one. Um, so this is actually. This one where it's flat, like this flat text is from punching from the front. And then all these loops, which is really how you're supposed to do it, um, is punching from the back. So typically when you do, oh yes, you missed it. Okay, so typically when you do this, you punch from the back. Like if I was doing a rug, for example, like with the tufting gut, I would punch from the back and then the front would be the final piece. But if you want this really flat, like stitched looking, you know, it looks almost like a back stitch, right? Um, then you just do it from the front. So I don't have them available for sale, Diana. Um, although it might be a fun thing to fun thing to check out. I have to place an order for some other things, so maybe I'll I'll check it out. So it's uh, I'm just gonna get real close. Ultra Punch Needle dot com. Uh, this is for to make these small ones. Uh, however, if you wanted to do it with like monk's cloth on the bigger yarn, then I got this one. And I don't know why I got this brand. Um, okay, so this says it's from Wanda Dash Needle. 
Bookshop.com. That doesn't sound familiar, so I'm not quite sure if that's where I got it from, but um, I don't know. It says SKC punch needle set. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> like, I'm really not really sure what the brand of this one is, but this one is uh, larger. So you can see here, you can stick actual yarn in it. Um, so th this is nice if you're doing like an actual punch needle um, with uh, like, like a monk's cloth, which is a wider, a wider, um, fabric like wider holes and then you can use something something like this and what's that there's a there's a brand out there i think they make their own that's really popular do any of you guys know that it was mentioned yesterday when we were talking about this but i can't i can't quite remember um what we said about that and i can't remember the name right now but anyway so this is what i have i do like that this one also gets different heights so like, you know, if you go real big, um, like, so, I mean, this is, this is really big, but your loop is going to be like half that size. So if you want like really big loops, um, oh, Oxford needles or something, right? And that's, that's a popular brand. I think they're probably pretty expensive, but I think I, these were, this one was probably cheaper just cause I wanted to give it a try. I don't remember. This was several, several years ago, but those are the ones that I have. Um, I know when I remember when I was originally um, looking looking for these online. Uh, I remember a lot of people talking about this one, the Ultra Punch. Um, this again is for like the smaller bit, and I, this was done with jean fabric. Um, that's not totally typical, I, and I don't think you want to use normal cotton either. It's a you need like a heavy weight um, something, so like a canvas or something. I'd have to research that again. Uh, but it's definitely super duper freaking fun <laughs> to play around with. Uh, but th that's what I have. That's and that's that's all I have for that. But yeah, we were talking about that the other day and got me wanting to try that out again. And man, I do kind of want to try those those tulips because I could do that with embroidery floss, like that that um that make it 80% good punch needle piece that that's all excess embroidery floss that I had. Oh man, I'm going to have to, I might have to find a piece of fabric and give that a try again. Well, I'm in, I'm in like the starting all the projects mode again. I've, I've been like, I've, they've just been like small projects that I've been starting lately though. <laughs> At least I haven't, I haven't started another giant quilt, although I suppose this is starting another quilt, but at least I have a plan for this one. Like I started that snake, um, knit toy <laughs> that I showed you guys yesterday. And, uh, like, I'm like, oh great, I'm starting that thing. Uh, I'm sort of sewing together a bunch of this old muslin, um, like my scrap muslin of these pieces. Uh, I've been sewing just like the garbage pieces together. I kind of want to make some quilts out of that. What is this called? Um, this is a uh, hand embroidery is what we're doing here. So we are stitching an entire alphabet of these little animals, fellers. So hand embroidery, you can just do with a little piece of thread. This is called embroidery floss and a needle and some fabric and you're good to go. All right. So he is coming along here. Oh, interesting. Grace says the old tattered flag, which sounds like a company. <laughs> I haven't heard of them. Uh, bought out the Ultra Punch company. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> interesting. Oh, Diana, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Oh, wait, I was going to use more blue. Uh, I was going to do, oh, here it is. Hiding. There you are. Uh, I was going to do the outline of this in the blue. Let's keep, let's keep doing that and then we'll just have the green left and we'll I think uh, we'll have time to do that yet too I think we got 15 minutes yet here all right so I'm gonna start with an away knot again again I'm being picky I'm just not jumping from shape to shape today 
<laughs> I mean, on another day, I probably would. <laughs> but I don't know. Today, uh, I'm not jumping around. I don't know. One of those days, I guess. So again, that's I'm reserving my thread for later. Because I like weaving in my ends versus tying knots. I just don't like when my thread, like on the back, accidentally catches on those loops and stuff. Not fun. I like the idea of this beach bubble being this blue. Kind of wish I would have done that on the original one. Oh, I love the colors that we picked for this one today. Or, well, I guess we picked them yesterday, but I'm getting to see it in its entirety today. All the colors together. Just that, that gray, like all these colors go with it, I think, really well. Well, I'm probably a little bit better at picking colors than I was 10 years ago when I made these original designs, too. I don't know. <laughs> oh, your kitty looks like a deluded tortie. It does, which means... He oh, he's probably she. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know all those those little rules. There's um a TikTok person that I just freaking love. I don't, I don't even remember what their username is. But she's a, uh, a cat groomer. <laughs> so it's just uh, just like here are these big fuzzy cats uh, coming in for their grooming. And then she'll talk about like the type of cat it is. And anyway, I think that's fun. But you're right. Yeah, like it's like a light colored, you know, when it has like the, the white, dark gray or black and um, orange. It's kind of like that, but like a light a lighter version of it. You're right, so these type of kitties do exist. <laughs> I, uh, oh, uh, Gina says calicos and torties are almost always female. I didn't realize that. watched a different uh yep embroidery exactly uh i watched a different cat video today of this cat that would ride with um his owner in his bike i think he was like a food delivery bike person in like a bigger city and this cat we would stay in the little basket, but he would look at every dog and hiss at every single dog that walked by. You know, in a city where, like, tons of dogs are walking by all the time, it would just give out a little hiss. Every dog that went by, whether the dog was paying attention or not. <laughs> it's just so silly. Oh, God. Kitties are goofy. Yeah, I definitely like this blue. So then the rest is uh, all green. So this is it, um, except for the green. And we're done with all the colors. We'll give his little green toes. And then we'll really dig into this uh, satin stitch. So that's, that's definitely going to be the, I guess, more difficult, harder part of this, uh, this design just trying to get like nice sand stitches down there so like what we're trying to go for like I want to try and get it so the letters just like kind of you can see the like angle of the stitches I want them to kind of follow the circle shape a little bit so that'll be a little tough I think we're gonna probably draw them in first uh, draw in like like angles we could actually just stitch those in right away but it, you know what it is it is nice to uh nice to draw them in hey kimberly yep i will be uh, i watched what i'm presuming is the first half um and then i will unless it went really long 
Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to sit and rewatch what I didn't see yet. So not really rewatching, but replay. Watch the replay. And um, I might knit on that snake feller a little bit more. little piece of blue that we'll save for later. Let's get this little knot off the back. And actually, I think we'll just, uh, I'll start the green. I'll get this text done of the green. This like in um, the speech bubble. And uh, we'll start the satin stitch fresh tomorrow, I think. Because it's 921. I think we'll just get this text going here. And we, we have his little toes to do too. Maybe I'll do his toes first and then we'll come back up here. Yeah, I want to do his toes. Then maybe all the text will be tomorrow. Oh, we got like, we got, oh, we already have a piece in here. I felt like we had a few, few things going on in this green. Actually, this tiny little piece here is probably way plenty for the toes. And this piece we can save for the for the text on top. Great! So I got my three strands all ready to go. That makes things easy. Oh, what does the word say? So it's M A R E W. That's just uh, if you don't want it to say that um, before you iron it on, feel free to cut that word out. Then you can put whatever. This is just like the type of meow that um, I think uh, the cat that we had at the time. Um, Kitty. I'm not sure we had Kitty at the time when I when I drew this, but but Kitty made a, a maru sound like meow, meow, meow. <laughs> so that's that's what that's how Kitty sounded. Kitty the kitty. Uh, so that's that's what that is. I know it's meow is spelled like. It can be like all, it can be M-E-W for like Mew or M-I, um, U-A, meow, no, A-U probably. Oh, I can't, I don't know, I ha I'd have to see it. Um, and then like, you know, M-E-O-W, so it can be however your, your kitty sounds, but Kitty, um, when Kitty got old, I think I think she got uh, she was a little deaf. So then um, her meow got a little louder and a little scratchier, <laughs> like maru. <laughs> kitty, Kitty was a good kitty too. All right, I kind of like his little green toes. They're silly. All right, I'm going to just kind of jump up to his other foot right here. His back toes. Actually, I have a lot of this green yet. I might use it up for the text. Get started on that. Oh my gosh, Kimberly said my cat just started meowing back at you. I'm telling you, that's... that's uh... <laughs> Uh, that, that's exactly what Kitty sounded like. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> that's nice. It would be fun to have a kitty cat, but I don't know. I don't like the indoor. I, uh, I don't, I'm not with all, I got all my kits and all that stuff. I don't need a cat running around and all that. All right, so there is that. And I think I'm gonna, you know, this is not gonna be enough for this whole text, but I think I'm going to just use what I got here. I'll use, um, I'll use this little piece up and then I think we'll call it a night. And then tomorrow we will come back and finish all this text up here in the speech bubble. 
and uh, then we'll get going on the satin stitch, all this big satin stitch at the bottom. Poor kitty. Kitty was gone for a few days and didn't know if we, then she was already old and and she came back skinnier and and uh, with some hearing loss. Oh, Kimberly says she's an old girl. I have two cats and she regularly has quite <laughs> like the chats with me. That's so sweet. I love that. Our cat, um, Sammy, which came after Kitty, um, would always talk like it sh she'd come running up the driveway or whatever. They're all outdoor, outdoor cats um, on a big place. And uh, you would meow and it'd meow back and meow again and meow back. <laughs> like a little little convo. I think that's just cute. Sammy had a very small little meow compared to to Kitty, and I don't think um we didn't even think he ever meowed. I think they were all girl cats, but I don't know. I keep saying he um but uh, maybe was, I don't know. I don't remember if he was a boy or a girl. And uh, we think they were they were together at the same time for a little bit when when Kitty was old and Sammy was little. Uh, Sammy wouldn't meow, and we think that Kitty taught him to meow. But he just had little meows, little, little, little ones. So if this was Sammy, I, he would not have a Maru. He would have like a, just a Mew, like M-I-U or something, or M-E-W. Chad's meow is about in the middle of the two. It's it's very sweet, but a little bit more raspy, I think, than than Sammy. <laughs> there. Now y'all know uh, all about all of our kitties' meows. <laughs> oh man, there's some content for ya. <laughs> And I cannot believe this, but I had enough thread on that tiny little scrap to do this whole text. And we got it done already, you guys. Just on time, too. Like, this is some thread chicken right here. Like, I'm going to have just enough to weave this in. That's awesome. I would have just wasted that little piece of thread, and I was able to get this whole, all this text in. I'm excited about that. Ooh, it looks like I got a little knot in here that I missed with this blue. Whoops. Let's see if I can kind of latch it into these stitches here. All right, weave that in and we are done with everything except the satin stitch at the bottom. So that's great. So that'll be a, a good, a nice big thing. Uh, big focus for tomorrow is, is working on those satin stitches. I, I feel like we should be able to get that done tomorrow. I don't see any reason that we shouldn't be able to finish those two. So there we are, you guys. I think he turned out so sweet. I am loving those colors. So again, here's the original original colors, um, just with the purple. I mean, that's kind of fun too, just having like a, a random color, but man, that gray is pretty. I like that. And then, um, oh yeah. And then let's keep this green piece out. Uh, 
the color down here will be be that green. Ugh, and that's just so sweet too, I think. Yay! All right, you guys, and um, just a reminder, just so I can show you guys up close, here is our embroidery of the month. Uh, there's a bunch of different stitches in this one. We got the chain stitch, uh, a running stitch, more chain stitch up there, back stitch, and we have some sand stitch and French knot. So we got a whole pile of things going on in that one. Uh, and then we have the freebie going out with this guy too, and I love it. I will show you it in a couple days once I know that um, all the subscribers got theirs. Uh, so they get the little surprise first. Oh, Kimberly says, March embroidery is terrific. Oh, thanks so much. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm busy working on a bunch of um, the ones for uh, later in the year. So throw out any ideas uh, anytime you want. If you're looking for an embroidery of the month, then it might, it might pop up in a month or so. <laughs> All right, you guys there. So thank you again for joining me and uh, I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll finish up this little kitty cat. I'm excited. I think he's turning out great. So have a lovely evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.